Greetings, math people. Today we're going to look at another, I guess I can call it an interesting integral. And we're going to look at doing a certain integral and we're going to look at doing it three different ways. So we're integrating uh, the square root of 16 minus x squared from negative 4 to 4. It's not like it's a tough integral. and I don't even know if I can really call it an interesting integral. But we really want to just uh, delve into the fact that the way you do it uh, can give you uh, three uh, different outcomes. Uh, one of the easy variety, another one uh, we'll call medium, and uh, another one uh, we'll call, uh, for lack of a better word, difficult. So let's go ahead and look at it. Specialized in science and math and original black men Busting thoughts that pierce your mental the fierce Ripping your saxon Vocal toe to toe impeccable Splitting your back son Simple as addition and subtraction Black thought the infinite relax one All right, so the easiest way uh, to do this integral is just an understanding of analytical geometry and that is the understanding that this guy is the graph of a semicircle who centers at the origin who has a radius of four so the graph of this function uh, let's see that's zero there and that will be four and negative four so the graph of the function uh, looks like this uh, this is the x-axis here and you know it, it has a radius of four and it's a semicircle so you know the area of a semicircle and we understand a definite integral is just area under the curve so area under the semicircle area of a semicircle is pi r squared over two and here um, r is four and so this will be uh, 16 pi over two or 8 pi uh, so this integral equals 8 pi and so uh, that's the easy way of course we, we solve that in a, in a matter of seconds and that's of course if you understand that this indeed is the graph of a semicircle which being if you're encountering this integral then you have uh, covered analytical geometry so that shouldn't be too much to ask for to understand that this is a graph of a semicircle but let's say you don't recognize this is a graph of a semicircle. Or uh, let's say, even though uh, we can figure it out geometrically, you're interested in seeing, well, how can we do this analytically? Like how do our normal integration rules apply in, in finding this result? So let's look at that as well. So I'm gonna integrate this without the geometric means for a more analytical means. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do a little substitution and I'm going to say uh, that x equals 4, what do I want to do, sine, cosine. Um, let's say 4 sine theta, uh, which means dx would be 4 cosine theta d theta. So, uh, We've come up with a situation like this before where we, we've done similar integration. So, so this technique uh, should be somewhat familiar for those that had to follow our videos. All right, so when I do this substitution, so let's see, I think I got room to substitute over here. So when, when I do this substitution, uh, we're going to have 16 minus x squared, uh, but x is 4 sine theta. And so that becomes... 16 minus 16 sine squared theta. And my dx uh, becomes 4 cosine theta d theta. And my limits. So when x is 4, so if x is 4 sine theta, so when x is 4, so what I'm doing is I'm writing this in terms of theta. Uh, when x is 4, sine theta is 1, and so theta is the arc sine of 1. So when x is 4, uh, theta would be pi over 2. Positive 4, pi over 2 up here, sorry. And when x is negative 4, it's the arc sine of negative 1. And so that would be negative pi over 2. 
All right. So let's uh, let's do uh, some uh, algebraic and trigonometric manipulation on this expression. Let's see. We got a little room here. I'm trying to be a little conservative before I new, move to a new sheet of paper. So what I'll do is factor out a 16 from here and I'll be left with one minus sine squared theta. And when I factor that 16 out, I can take the square root of that 16, which is four, and I'll multiply that four by this four, which will give me 16. And so I'll have 16, uh, the integral from negative pi over two to pi over two. And now inside this radical is one minus sine squared theta, but one minus sine squared theta is cosine squared theta and the square root of cosine squared theta is cosine theta. So this is gonna become cosine theta when the 16 comes out, and cosine theta times cosine theta is cosine squared theta, d the theta. All right, so this is essentially what we have to integrate. And to integrate this, we're, we're gonna to have to do a power reducing trig identity to break this down. Uh, so let's think about it a little bit. So to remind you, uh, I think I have a little room to work here, uh, that cosine A plus B, uh, but I'll say cosine uh, 2A would be cosine A times cosine A, that's cosine squared A, minus sine a times sine a, that's sine squared a, and sine squared a can be written as one minus cosine squared a. And if you do the subtraction, uh, you'll get two cosine squared a minus one equals cosine two a, and to bring this to a new sheet, if I solve for, if I solve for cosine squared A, uh, I can say that cosine squared A is one plus cosine two A over two. So that's a power reducing identity. So uh, this cosine squared theta, I'm going to turn into one plus cosine two theta over two. And so when I do this, this two that's down here, this, this two will divide this 16 here and turn it into eight. So what I'll get, I'll get eight times the integral from negative pi over two to pi over two of one plus cosine two theta d theta. All right, and now this is, this is integrated fairly easily. So eight, the integral of one would be theta. The integral of cosine two theta would be one half sine two theta to be evaluated from negative pi over two to pi over two. <clears throat> All right, uh, let's plug this in and see what happens. So if I first plug in pi over two for theta, so this will be pi over two plus one half sine two times pi over two, that'll be one half sine pi, uh, the sine of pi is zero, uh, so that cancels. And then, so there's nothing there. And then minus, now I'll plug in negative pi over two. So minus negative pi over two. And then plus, again, you're gonna have the sine of two times negative pi over two, that's the sine of negative pi. Uh, that's zero as well. So we have, we'll have eight times pi over two minus negative pi over two, that's just pi. And so we have our answer eight pi. So uh, there of course was a little more work than, you know, just recognizing it was a semicircle, but it was fairly doable. 
and we'll call that the medium. And if you want to get into a whole a lot of work, uh, there's another way of doing this. Well, it's kind of the similar way of doing this, but without changing variables. So let's see if I can uh, go back in time. So let's say from here, when I did this first integration, let's say I didn't change variables, change these limits in terms of theta. And let's say I, I went, a, went off with the process of integrating, but then I just rewrote everything back in terms of X. So because yeah, some people are not into changing variables, uh, they, they will do the U substitution, but then they'll integrate and put things back in terms of X. So let's say we, we actually did that. So let's say we've integrated. So we went through that whole process of integrating and we got through this, this antiderivative here, and then we want to rewrite things in terms of X. So let me just write the statement we have here. All right, so it's eight times theta plus one half sine two theta. All right, and so I wanna rewrite this in terms of X. So I have to remember that the substitution I made is that X is for sine theta, uh, which means sine theta is X over four. And which means that theta is the arc sine of X over four. All right, so that will take care of this guy right here. Theta is the arc sine of X over four. Well, what about one half sine two theta or just about sine two theta? So sine two theta, sine two theta, that would be sine theta times cosine theta. Well, that would be two sine theta times cosine theta. Well, what's cosine theta? Cosine theta, if sine theta is X over four, and this is opposite over hypotenuse, then cosine theta would be the square root of 16 minus X squared over four. So let's take a look. So let's say this is theta, uh, this is X, this is four. If you do Pythagorean theorem, uh, you get that this side is the square root of 16 minus X squared. And so cosine would be the square root of 16 minus X squared over four. So sine two theta uh, would be two times X over four, because X over four is sine theta times the square root of 16 minus X squared over four and that two would make that two and that would make that an eight. And so we'd have eight times the square root of 16 minus X squared, excuse me, X times the square root of 16 minus X squared over eight. So uh, let's write all that. So again, uh, this is gonna turn into the arc sine of X over four. And this is gonna turn, well, I didn't take, let's take the one half. So this was one half times X times the square root of 16 minus X squared over eight. So times one half will be over 16. So what we have, and I think I can fit it in here, we have eight and then we have uh, theta, which is the arc sine of X over four. And then we have one half sine two theta, which uh, one over 16 times, uh, times X times the square root of 16 minus X squared. All right. And in terms of X, we're gonna evaluate this from negative four to four. Okay, again, this is, the, this is the longest way of doing a problem. 
Now here's the good news. So we're going to do our calculations. But the good news is when I plug in 4 and negative 4, uh, this expression here is going to turn into 0 because you're going to have 16 minus 4 squared, which is 0, and 16 minus negative 4 squared is 0. So it's going to zero all this out. So really when I'm doing my calibration, my calculation rather, uh, this is the only guy I really have to pay attention to. So uh, let's let's do it. Let me let me move it ever so slightly here. All right. So move it down a little bit. So let's say I plug in positive four first. Well, I have my eight here, and if I plug in positive four, that's the arc sine of one. That's pi over two. Minus, now I'll plug in my negative 4, that's the arc sine of negative 1, that's negative pi over 2. And pi over 2 minus negative pi over 2 is pi, times 8 is 8 pi. So uh, there you have it, uh, the integral of the square root of 16 minus x squared from negative 4 to 4. Uh, we showed it the easy way, the medium way, the hard way, always were good ways. We'll see you next time. Specialized in science and math and origin, no black men. Busting thoughts that pierce your mental the fierce, ripping your saxon. Vocal toe to toe, impeccable, splitting your back, son. Simple as addition and subtraction. Black thought, the infinite relax form. 